What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I plan on leveling up through the campaign in Diablo 4 on the Druid. After leveling more than 10 Druids through the story during the betas, I wanted to share with you some of my tips and tricks I learned while walking through all of Act 1. I'll also provide you with my skill build that I plan to use all the way to level 50. This guide is going to be more focused on quickly getting through the campaign, so we will value damage and speed above other things. If you plan on taking your time through the campaign though, you can still use this guide. I'll provide you with some other leveling options if you don't like the fast version. First thing I'll say is it's up to you if you want to be on World Tier 1 or 2, don't be afraid to level on World Tier 1. If you're looking to go as fast as possible, this will be the correct choice. If you're looking for that extra challenge, go for World Tier 2. Starting off with your first skill point, you're going to want to take Storm Strike. This is a melee skill, but it provides a 25% damage reduction as a pretty respectable damage for a basic skill. As you're going through the first dungeon, consider taking a small detour to kill a couple extra skeletons. If you kill enough, you can actually hit level 4 before getting to the first boss for very little time lost. I actually put all my points into Storm Strike first. Unlocking the vulnerable debuff is a huge damage boost, and with the damage reduction, you can even just stand still and hold down Storm Strike while fighting the first boss. Continue questing until you start to see herbs on the ground. Make sure to pick up all these you see along the way as they'll come in very handy here shortly. Once you can choose a core skill, you have a few options. You can choose any of these that you like, and you can still make it through the campaign just fine. Pulverize, Lightning Storm, and Tornado have great AoE, but really struggle against bosses in the campaign. If you get any of these aspects though, you can easily switch to them. Shockwave for Pulverize, Storm Chaser for Tornado, Overcharge for Lightning Storm, and Aftershock for Landslide. It's very cheap to respec early on, so try them all out and find the one you like the most. Personally, I like Landslide for speed leveling. It doesn't have the biggest AoE, so your goal is to run from Elite to Elite, taking them out. Our target is the Primal Landslide upgrade, which gives us Terramotes. We gain Terramotes when stunning or immobilizing enemies, which make our landslides automatically crit with extra crit damage. Our upgraded Storm Strike will be our source of immobilize for now. When we get to town, I recommend doing this side quest along the way for some more herbs. It takes less than 30 seconds, and all you have to do is walk over to the guards and do an emote. Once you're ready to leave the town, stop by the alchemist and craft as many weak iron barb elixirs you can with the herbs we've picked up. This will give us a small XP buff, but more importantly, a thorns buff that will immensely help druids through the early levels. Continue following the main quest and you'll end up at the condemned mines entrance. This is where you'll want to activate your first iron barb elixir. If you move through this dungeon at a good speed, you will still have your elixir up for one of the hardest early boss fights. Don't be afraid to switch Storm Strike to Wind Shear here, as it is a very melee unfriendly fight. Also, don't forget, when you reach level 10, go back to town to upgrade your potion. So, taking a look at the skill tree, as I said, for our first few points, we're just going to take all the points in Storm Strike. Then, as we move down, feel free to choose any core skill you want. Again, I like Landslide. And then I take the Enhanced Landslide, and then Primal Landslide for those Terra Motes. Now, here you have a choice. If you feel like you are leveling just fine, you can continue to put points into Landslide. Or if you feel like you're taking a little too much damage, this is where you're gonna grab Blood Howl, and then you're gonna fill out Landslide. Either way, grab the points in Landslide or Blood Howl whenever you're ready, and then move on down here. Now, once we've reached the companion stage, we've actually unlocked the most important piece of Landslide leveling, the Poison Creeper. What this does is it applies an AoE immobilize to every monster around you and does huge damage. So we're gonna take a point in here, and personally, I actually switch over to Wind Shear at this point. I take the points out of Storm Strike because I like the movement speed buff and I like to be fully ranged. I don't recommend this for everyone though. I think Storm Strike is a much better option on average, but if you're feeling comfortable and you want to go fast and you like to be ranged, I'd say wind shear. Otherwise, stick with Storm Strike. Here's a small little clip of how I level now that we have Poison Creeper. As you can see, I'm looking to use wind shear as I'm running so I can continuously kill the monsters while keeping up the movement speed buff. And when I get into an AoE group, I use the Poison Creeper to kill everything within range, and I use Landslide specifically on the Elite, and then I continue on my way using Wind Shear, again, to keep up that movement speed buff and continue moving. If you're using Storm Strike, it's the same idea. You'll even generate more Terramotes with Storm Strike because you will be immobilizing. 
you want to put two points into enhanced poison creeper and then ferocious poison creeper this is going to extend the duration of the poison which actually increases the damage and the other two points are going to go into blood howl an enhanced blood howl and innate blood howl what this does is whenever we get a kill we reduce the cooldown of blood howl by one second you're going to constantly be able to use blood howl to keep yourself healed on top of that it gives you 20 spirit in between monster packs so this is really nice i will say though at some point you will gain access to a aspect that gives you plus two skills while fortified if you do grab that and you want you can actually switch out of blood Howl and put these points up here into earthen bulwark and this is going to give you not only your fortify but your unstoppable eventually we'll switch this later but if you like blood Howl, i suggest sticking with that as we move down the tree you see we now have this unlocked and you gain access to our one movement ability trample so as you take trample i suggest also taking the ability behind it this will make it have really high single target damage for our next 20 or so skill points we're actually just looking at pure damage upgrades i will say if you like the companions feel free to grab them here we will grab them in a little bit but you can also add them on the bar now i look into taking these damage notes first though I take Neurotoxin, Poison Enemies are slowed by 8% from our Poison Creeper, and then Invenom. This is 30% additional critical strike damage. Now, if you remember, our Landslide is always critting from our Terramotes, and our Poison Creeper is not only applying an AoE poison, the passive effect will keep the poison up on a single target almost 100% of the time. So we'll always be gaining value here. For your last point, if you want, if you feel like you're struggling with Spirit still, you can take the 20 Spirit on Trample, or like I said, you can come up here and grab one of the companions once we've gotten here we have two trees that we're looking to fill out this one right here and then this one over here again you can do this in any order you want this has fortify benefits here so if you're looking to get your fortify online and you're switching over to that i would consider this alternatively this tree just has great throughput the first skills we have uh, nature magic skills deal increased damage to elites which is the most important things we're going to be fighting natural disaster your earth skills deal increased damage to vulnerable enemies both Storm Strike and Wind Shear will be applying Vulnerable, so we get great bonuses here. And then finally, Resonance. Nature Magic skills will deal 6% increased damage, tripled if you alternate between Storm and Earth. If you remember, our generator is either Storm Strike or Wind Shear, which is Storm, and then Landslide is our Spender, which is Earth. So we're going to be getting a huge bonus there. We need one more point to move down. You can put it in Circle of Life if you, if you want. We'll fill this out eventually, um, or you can continue to work up here. Once we have this unlocked, this is going to be a little weird, but we're actually going to take Ursine Strength. It gives you 20% additional life during Werebear form and for three seconds after, but that's not what we're looking for. The line underneath is independent whether or not you are or are not in Werebear form. While healthy, deal 30% increased damage. This is just a great damage multiplier with no conditionals that's going to make our build feel really good. So we're going to continue to fill out the rest of the nodes we talked about. So any order, you want to grab Circle of Life, Crushing Earth, Safeguard and Stone Guard. Putting points into Safeguard is going to help us get above this 50% threshold for Stone Guard to activate. Now, there is an aspect in the third area we will go called Dry Steps, and the aspect is called uh, Shepherd's Aspect. What it does is it makes your core skill do more damage based on how many passive pets you have. So the Creeper is one, the Wolves are two, and then once you unlock that Shepherd Aspect, I recommend picking up Ravens and then taking three points here. I dropped the points in Trample personally, um, and this will give you three plus one plus two, so six total pets to increase your core skill damage, which most of our damage is coming from Landslide. Now, you don't have to take this. You can very easily not take Ravens and leave it in Trample. I know a lot of people like Trample, so feel free to keep that. It's an unstoppable, it's a movement cooldown. It feels great. Now, for the rest of the points, this is something to keep in mind while you're leveling. Remember how I said Poison Creeper is going to be your big AoE skill that kills everything? If you ever use it and you notice it doesn't kill everything with one click, what you're going to do is you're going to put a point into Call of the Wild. And then as soon as your Poison Creeper is back to killing everything in one go, you can stop putting points in here. Basically, you're going to put points into Call of the Wild up to three and points in the Poison Creeper itself all the way up to five. This is, again, our main AoE clearing skill, so we want to make sure this is always clearing out the mobs. So whenever you need to, make sure you drop a point in here. For the last points, personally, I just like to fill out the wolves. Um, 
there's not too many other places to put it right now. There are some other options, but for leveling specifically, this is a great burst skill. The thing about companions are they don't cost spirit to use. And as you'll see, we have a boon that can reset the cooldowns on them. So a no spirit cost instant attack is going to feel really good when leveling to take out high health targets. The last point, you can throw in an enhanced wolves because we will be poisoning enemies and immobilizing them. So this will gain some value there. Now you can see I went all the way up to level 50 with 10 extra renown points. You don't I have to have this obviously um you can take points out wherever you don't have to put points into the companions if you don't want to um or you can cut out points in these last couple ones i think these nodes specifically though are all really strong points so i would cut them from companions uh as you saw there so we take them out of the wolves that's five we can take them out of the creeper we can take them out of here and then there we go I like to go all the way through Fractured Peaks first for Act 1, and then you have a choice of where to go for Act 2. You can either go to Skaz Glen or Dry Steps. Personally, I like to go to Skaz Glen because I've set up my aspects to have 6 out of my 8 aspects in Skaz Glen. We also gain access to the Druid's core class feature known as Spirit Boons. These can be quite powerful. Um, depending on how we can unlock them as well, we can get some pretty strong ones early. I'm not entirely sure what order you can unlock them in, but I'm going to show you guys which ones I would get and what order. If you could get it, you're looking at Pack Leader and Obsidian Slam. Both of these are very good. Because we're critting all the time with a landslide, we have a very high chance to reset the cooldown of our companion skills. With three companion skills, that's going to make us feel really good without costing any spirit. Uh, Obsidian Slam, we're basically going to use Poison Creeper, kill a bunch of mobs, and then our next landslide is going to overpower. That's great damage while leveling. We have uh, Wariness in Deer, 10% damage reduced from Elites. That's not bad. And then finally, Avian Wrath, 30% critical strike damage. I'm guessing you might have to unlock them from left to right. So it's nice that these two are in the front. So I'd say look to grab these two and then these two when you can. I put together this little map that shows the name of the aspect and the name of the dungeon they're located in. When you complete the dungeon, you unlock the Codex power, which allows you to directly apply it to your gear. So I plan on leaving the Fractured Peaks through the north up to grab the Ballistic Aspect on my way to start the campaign quest. I want to quickly go over these aspects and explain how they're going to work. So the one major one that I talked about is the Shepherd's Aspect. This is in Dry Steps and I plan on going to Dry Steps in Act 3. So what this means is I don't need to take a lot of companions early if I don't want to, but once I do get this, because we put it on our amulet, it'll actually be 9% for each companion. And with all of them unlocked, we'll have six companions for a total of 54% to our core skill with our companions. This is the highest value you're going to get. I think this is really important. If you want to, you can actually just run all the way to dry steps. Just get this aspect and then continue back in Skaz Glen. The other aspects we're looking at are Edge Masters and Expectant. This is a really cool combo that I like. Edge Masters will make your abilities do more damage based on your primary resource. So our goal is to use a landslide at maximum resource and then use our builder to go back to maximum resource. When we do that, we have aspect of the expectant. Every time we use a basic skill, it increases the damage of our next core skill. So you're looking at using two to three basic skills and then a core skill and then two to three basic skills and then a core skill. So we're going to be using edge master for damage at maximum spirit. And then this will stack up another bonus because we're going to have to use our basic skill anyway. Over here, we have Ghost Walker Aspect. This is one of my favorite aspects. It's extremely strong on Druid. The way we activate this is once you get this, you want to get Earthen Bulwark with the Fortify attached to it. Essentially, whenever you use Earthen Bulwark for the duration and then four seconds afterwards, you'll have 10% increased movement speed and you can move through units known as Phasing in Path of Exile. It's extremely strong. With this, we're looking to get Aspect of Mending Stone. This makes our Earthen Bulwark last six extra seconds. What that means is our Bulwark will last a total of nine seconds, and then for four seconds afterwards, we'll continue to have Ghost Walker's speed and the ability to pass through units for a total of 13 seconds on just a 16 second cooldown before cooldown reduction. So that's a great uptime. We're also looking at this other combo. Aspect of Quicksand, damage from Earth Skills will slow enemies hit. Now, monsters will generally be slowed or immobilized with our Poison Creeper, but sometimes Poison Creeper won't be up. This, what this allows us to do is, if we use Landslide, the first hit will apply the slow, and then the second hit will get any bonuses from slows. And the biggest bonus we can get is from the Crash Stone Aspect. Earth Skills deal more critical strike damage to crowd-controlled enemies. Remember, our Terra Motes are making us always crit. So this critical strike damage value is always getting value. With quicksand, this will make it so that if we don't have poison creeper up, we will still apply a crowd control, which is a slow, and get the value.
The last one we talked about, Ballistic. This means any Fortify you have, you will gain plus two to landslide. Very strong early game power. So all of these aspects come from the Codex, meaning they're very easy to get and apply whenever you want. One thing you'll notice is I don't have an aspect in my weapon or my offhand. This is for a very important reason. You'll notice while leveling, you upgrade your weapon constantly. I personally recommend using a two-handed weapon while leveling, especially with landslide. You'll want those big chunky hits and it's much easier to maintain. I was going stretches where I would upgrade my weapon every two to three levels. and It's just going to cost you way too much money and resources to constantly be applying an aspect to it. I will say for this build though, you can get certain aspects to drop if you get lucky. One of the best ones for the build is the aftershock aspect. What this does is it doubles your landslide generation. So you will use four landslide pillars instead of two. Very, very good. The one other one you can look for is called Trampled Earth. If you take Trample on your bar, this will summon landslide pillars to the left and right of you the whole time you're trampling and will completely cover your screen and wipe out anything. So keep an eye out for those specifically. A couple other random things I want to go over real quick. Gems, if you plan on putting gems in, you can use a Sapphire critical strike damage to crowd control enemies. You can also use the Emerald since we will apply vulnerable through our basic skill. Either is fine. For our armor, I recommend going for life while leveling. Jewelry, if you're going to put something in, probably a diamond so you hit all your resistances or you can check your resistances and cover whatever you need. Another thing, if you get the obols while leveling, I recommend spending it on a offhand, which is the totems. When you do this, you can only roll offensive aspects and it is the cheapest at 40 obols. It's very important if you're looking for offensive aspects to go for the offhand. Um, some stats you want to look for while leveling. You can get plus ranks to a lot of your skills and you can get them before you've unlocked them. So for example, if you get plus one to companion skills, you can put the wolves on your bar without putting a point into it. Plus ranks to landslide is also really nice. Uh, plus ranks to any of your defensive skills that will unlock Blood Howl or Earthen Bulwark. Uh, cooldown reduction, movement speed, those are pretty typical stats you're looking for. We're using uh, physical damage with landslide and crit damage will also be really nice. Lastly, one thing I want to touch on just very briefly, I did put a Paragon board in here, but please don't follow this too much. I don't super recommend continuing this build past level 50. I would say once you get to level 50, you should really look to switch over to the build you want to play. This is mainly meant for going quickly during leveling. Um, if you really like this build though, you're more than welcome to follow the Paragon board. It is by no means min-max. It's just kind of in there to give you an idea what to look for, which boards would work if you like this uh, build. You can see some of the synergies we have, the poison synergies, earthen devastation, things like that. So I hope you guys uh, have a great time playing Druid. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's definitely one of the weaker leveling classes, but I think it's a little bit better than people give it credit for. I hope this will help you out and I hope it can make you like Druid just as much as I do. I would love to answer any questions you guys have in the comment section down below. Until next time though, I'll see you guys later.